Hello, this is Soundout here, and welcome back to another Soundout review. Today we'll be taking a look at the SH Figure Arts Kamen Rider Marika Peach Energy Arms from Kamen Rider Gaim. This is the latest premium Bandai exclusive Bandai Collector Shop Tamashii Nations figure release for the Kamen Rider Gaim line, and that is SH Figure Arts Kamen Rider Marika. This was Gaim's main female writer, and I'm glad she did get an SH Figure Arts release, but it seems like Bandai is at least making all the ones that appeared in show and were main characters. And she definitely was a main character and the longest running female writer in any writer series. So go Marika. And as you can see, because she is an exclusive, she does come in a closed face box with an image of her instead of an open face with plastic so you can see the figure. Uh, but other than that, the box is very, very nice looking. This is the first Kamen Rider Gaim series SH figure art that I've purchased. So it's interesting seeing a box design like this. Now, as you can see, that is the box. So Kamen Rider Marika was the main female writer for Kamen Rider Gaim. Uh, there were, I think, technically Jam is a female writer, um, and I believe there was one in Gaim Gaiden, but this is the main female writer of the series, and she did last longer than any other female writer, like I said, as she was around for more than 20 episodes, uh, which is quite impressive overall. Now, she is a web exclusive, which all the other female writer figure arts to date have been, but I think that was more so because she is an energy writer, and all the energy writers have been exclusive. Um, that would include Zangetsu Shin, Duke, and Sigurd, as well as Marika, and uh, Lemon Energy Baron. They've all been an exclusive of some sort, and I think it's because of the Sonic Arrow being a weapon that might be hard to mass produce at the detail it needs to and at the quality control it needs to. But I must do the obvious comparison right away. Here's SH Figure Arts Kamen Rider Marika with her arms change equivalent who was also an exclusive. Um, as you can see here they are very similar um, in design. The Figure Arts is actually taller than the arms change. Um, and you can see the armor is a lot sleeker on the SH Figure Arts release. Now, the one thing I will complain about on the Figure Arts release is that the shade of pink they used is a little lighter than the series. The arms change is closer to the shade it was in the show. So there is that. But, we're here to talk about the Figure Art. As I've already reviewed, the arms change. And this Figure Art is gorgeous. I loved the Energy Riders designs. And I really would like to own figure arts of all of them if they weren't so expensive. But as you can see, they gave her the bubble look across the peach parts throughout her eyes. And it's not something that's like molded on the outside. It actually is covered by a layer of plastic, but you can't really tell. And it's really, really cool looking. It looks like flowing soda, uh, which is what it should be. Speaking of which, her emblem on her chest is greatly detailed. And... Her Genesis driver as well. Now the lock seed can come out of the Genesis driver as you can see here and you can see they molded it just like the uh, lock should and you can put in I guess you could try to put in and actually it will let you uh, you can put in the the closed one uh, with some finagling but you are really just gonna leave the open one in. Um, there's no reason for the closed one to really exist and I don't know why it does honestly um, except maybe to give it to uh, Jinber Peach Gaim. I don't know. But other than that, she has her uh, loincloth skirt piece uh, on both sides. It looks very good, as well as some molded details here. Um, her feet do look a little small, and I realize that this is screen accurate because she uses the same costume pieces for the lower legs, and they use a similar piece, but her feet did look a little small in the series. I did double check. Of course, it is molded on the bottom with her logo, um, which is quite impressive overall. What's even more impressive is her articulation range, as she does have full articulation range for an SH figure art, ball joint neck at two different joints. She's got the full range in the shoulders, including the moving shoulder pad, a bicep rotation, a double jointed elbow, a ball, a triple joint, ball joint wrist. She's got the torso articulation. It doesn't have too much forward bend because the armor kind of clashes with the driver, um, but it does have quite a bit of backward bend, which is nice. Outward leg movement, forward and back. Uh, it is on the 
the single hip system so it doesn't extend down. But it does rotate, it does have a double joint, it does have forward and backward pivot, ankle tilt, ankle rotation, and toe bend. She can get in a lot of poses and it's really impressive overall. What's also impressive is her accessory count as the extra lock seat is not all she comes with. She also does include several hands. She comes with two open hands, one that is really good at holding the lock seat, and the other is really good for, you know, holding her belt, which was the thing that she did in a lot of poses. And it's nicely sized, and they both work really well. She does include a hand specifically designed for pushing the side of the Genesis driver. Even though the piece is just molded and doesn't actually close in, it's a nice gesture. Um, I don't really know where I'll exactly use that, but if you want squash, sparking, and ole attacks, there you go. Now she does include two hands for holding the Sonic Arrow, both a left and right hand. And the Sonic Arrow itself, I might add, is probably one of the best looking figure arts accessories I've ever seen. As you can see, it is a nice metallic red with a pearlized finish and nice clear plastic where it should be. It looks very, very good. Plus, the lock seed that is stored on her belt, the open one, is able to connect to both versions of the Sonic Arrow as it does plug in on there and stays on there quite well so you can get those powered up attacks. Overall the Sonic Arrow just looks fantastic. Of course you also get the Sonic Arrow in its open firing position. These are two separate pieces, it's not just one which is great because that bow does need to bend and she does come with two hands to have the grip for the Pull. So even though these two hands are for the opposite hand to hold and pull the Sonic Arrow, I don't know when I'll use these. They kind of seem like odd inclusions as she typically just used her left hand to hold it and her right hand to fire it. Never really used it the other way around from what I could tell. Plus, as you can see, the Loxy looks perfectly in place there, like it is molded in, even though it isn't, which is a nice use of accessory pieces. So that way we don't have to worry about having four Sonic Arrows with one figure, just two. Overall, SH Figuarts Kamen Rider Marika is just so impressive. Every time Bandai has made a female Rider Figuart, they've improved on things. Nadashiko was improved on by FOM. FOM was improved on by Marika. I can't wait to see what they do with Kamen Rider Kivara in September. That's going to be a cool figure if they've been building this up, and if Marika is, you know, another stepping stone towards a better female Rider Figuart. I'm excited for Kivara. And honestly, outside of, you know, some coloring issues with her being a little bit lighter shade of pink than the series, there's really no flaws of this figure. She has all the articulation range you could ever want. She has all the accessories she really needs. She has no restrictions, no limitations. She does not feel fragile. This is a fantastic action figure. And I'm not sure how it compares to the rest of the Gaim line. I saw issues with Kiwami chest cracks and stuff, and I didn't really want to go and buy all the Gaim figure arts since I, you know, bought all the arms change figures. But Marika was my favorite character from the series, and I really wanted to get her, so I ended up getting her as my one Gaim figure art. And I kind of want to pick up another one to see if the quality is sustained throughout the series or if she is just the best there is. Overall, though, if you can get a good price on this figure, I'd highly recommend it. Definitely, definitely a great action figure, and I can't find any major flaws with the figure at all. Heck, even that shoulder pad gets out of the way. It's on ball joints, so it cannot be in the way of her arm movement. Overall, Commodore Marika is fantastic, and she is now joined in a line of female writer SH figure arts. Heck, let's bring Tackle in here for good measure. And honestly, I'm so glad that Bandai has decided to make female writers. I think that when they did the SH Figure Art Super Sentai figures, they figured out how to make a good superhero female body mold, and they applied it to Kamen Rider, and now we've gotten some really good figures. Nadashika was a little fragile, though, I will say that, and Tackle is a little restrictive, but mostly due to design. I'm glad to see that we're getting more armored female writers now, and I really hope that we get a mage... And we get, uh, you know, the three movie writers from Kamen Rider Blade, uh, Missing Ace. I would love to see Lark be made. That would be really, really cool. 
Um, even if she's like in a two pack with Lance or whatever, I'd like to see those three get made, especially Lark. Um, and I'd like to see a Amaki from Hibiki even would be neat to see that mold in a female form. Overall, Bandai has been making more female rider figures and Toei has been making more female riders. And I'm glad to see that they're getting the SH Figures treatment they have deserved for years. Overall, really happy with Marika. Definitely recommended. Let me know if you want to see reviews of Nadashiko, Fom, and Tackle. I will gladly review those figures. And until next time, be sure to stay tuned on Sound Out 12 for Model Kit Monday on Mondays, where I review model kits of my choosing. Sound Out's Toy Chest on Thursdays, the mystery review series where I provide a clue a week ahead of time. And the Sound Out review on Saturdays, where I review something from Transformers, Power Rangers, Super Sentai, Kamen Rider, and more. And also be sure to check out Hirotaka.com for all your Kamen Rider news. And talk to you on the Sound Out saying, goodbye. Thank you.